The question number 10 is about trapezoids. Here we have to apply the property of trapezoids. Use coordinate geometry to find lengths and endpoints of mid-segments. There are about three different types of problems. You will learn each of them one by one. The first type is, you know, a proving sort of problem. But before that, let us learn a little bit about trapezoids. Now, I'm sure you might know what is a triangle. This is a triangle, isn't it? Now, what if I cut the top of the triangle? This top part is cut off. Then the remaining part, right? This part is a trapezoid. This is a trapezoid. Now, one of the main important properties is only one pair of sides are parallel. This side is parallel to this side. The other two are not. See, they're closing in, right? Here, these two are parallel, not the others. Okay. But there is another special thing about this trapezoid. If these uh, parallel sides are called bays. See, they are like, like a base, right? Like a flat base. So, they are bays. But it can even be like this. This is also a trapezoid. So, imagine the parallel side. These are the bays over here. Okay. These are the bays. And the other two sides are called legs. These are legs. Okay, over here it is leg and leg. Now, if the legs are equal to each other, if the legs are equal, okay, if this is equal to this, then it is called isosceles trapezoid. This is important. And in isosceles trapezoid, the base angles are also equal, just like the isosceles triangle. These two are also equal. And one more important property is the consecutive angles of a trapezoid are supplementary. So if I add them up, it will be 180 degrees in total. Same thing over here. If this is isosceles, then these two are equal. Now with this knowledge, we can easily solve problems. Let's look at this. The medical sign shows this is a trapezoid. Uh, it's a trapezoidal prism. The front face of the sign is an isosceles trapezoid. And they have given us a lot of things. Wx, this is Wx, is equal to 2x minus 2. Yz, where is Yz? This one, Y and Z, is equal to 2x plus 6. Wz is 4x plus 5. And lastly, we have xy, that is 5x minus 3. These are all the values. Now, here they have mentioned it's isosceles trapezoid. Now, we have to prove this is equal to 8. Let's just prove it. We know these both will be equal. Base can't be equal. Base 1 is short, 1 is long. It's not equal. They are parallel only. Now, they have already mentioned it's isosceles. So, the legs, this and this side are equal. Now, that means it's 4x plus 5. That is equal to 5x minus 3. Take 4x to the other side and 3 to the other side. It will be 5 plus 3 equals... 5x minus 4x, so x equals 8. That is your answer. Yes, that's proven. Now, uh, here they want in terms of paragraph statements. So you can tell this is isosceles trapezoid, which is given to us. And then from the definition, we know these two sides are equal. That's the legs of the tra uh, trapezoid are equal in isosceles trapezoid. That's by the definition. So that's equal. And you're equating it. You're using the subtraction property, subtracting 5 on both the sides. Sorry, subtracting uh, 4x on both the sides. Then you're, again, you're adding both the sides additional property by 3. And then you're getting x equals 8, symmetry property. All this is not required. Just the answer will be asked. This is an MCQ question. That's why. Now, we have more problems. B, what they have asked is, find the measure of z, this one. Sorry, find the measure of z unknown if w is 106 i told you these two are supplementary so this x i will take it as x plus 106 must be equal to 180 degree right x is equal to 180 minus 106 that is equal to 74 74 degrees yes z is 74 degrees now what is the perimeter Perimeter is basically adding all the sides. They have asked to find the perimeter. So add them all up. We have given the dimensions. So it's 2x minus 2 plus 2x plus 6 plus 4x plus 5 plus 5x minus 3. You can substitute x value we found out was 8. 
So you made 8 is substituted. Let's simplify this. 2x plus 2x is 4x plus 4 again 8x plus 5 is 13x plus the numbers over here it's 6 plus 5 is 11 minus 3 is 8 minus 2 is 6 so it's plus 6. Substitute 3 times 8 plus 6. So it's 130 minus 26 it's 104 plus 6 110. That's the answer. Yes, it's correct. That's how we solve it. You can directly put in the calculator and solve also. Those are the steps. Now here we have still more straightforward problems. They have told to find the measure of T. This is an isosceles trapezoid. 60 and 60 is same. Okay, the answer is 60 here. What about this Y? It's 180 minus 68. That will be 112. Okay, You're, because these both are supplementary when you add them. Now just uh, subtract this by 180, you'll get the answer for y. And now we move on to the problem where you need to verify whether this is a trapezoid or no. Now this is interesting because you have so many points, right? Uh, one way, because since it's MCQ, first try to graph this in your own ways. Let's take a coordinate, for example, like this. Now minus and minus is somewhere over here, minus 3. So I'll just point this point over here, 5 and 1 somewhere over here, 10, t is 10, that is somewhere over here, minus 2. And lastly, we have minus 4 and minus 9. Okay, so this seems like a trapezoid because, you know, this will be, okay. Now, this is a trapezoid, verify it's a trapezoid, most probably it's a trapezoid, so uh, you know, you can easily quickly solve only for the slope, but I'll show you the exact method. Now, from this, you can understand this might be a trapezoid. If you do it accurately over there, only you'll understand. Because these are not going to the other side. If this was, say, like this, then it's not a trapezoid. Now it's, you know, closing in. And there are two parallel sides, most probably. And now what you can do is, you can, uh, there are various ways graphing will be harder i believe so let me just uh, tell you the this method okay by the slope it's easy we'll do it one by one if the slopes are equal over here and the slopes are not equal over there then it's a trapezoid so if i write the uh, number uh, you know coordinates r was this this is s t and u so what do you need to do is first find the slope of any two lines slope formula is y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1 isn't it so I'll just erase this, that's the thing. Let me erase the coordinate. Now here you need to just choose any two points. I'll take the first two, R, S. So R, S, so what happens? Y2, this is X1, Y1, X2, Y2. Y2 minus Y1 divided by X2 minus X1. Now what next? Here you need to simplify. It will be 3 by plus 3, it is 4 by 8 or half. So the slope is half. Same thing must be prepared, uh, repeated, sorry, to ST, TU, and lastly, RS, U and S, R, U, U and R. See this side, this side, this side, this side. So over here, it's already done. You can see line RS. I will just keep this one, the figure, let it be. Now the line RS was found out to be half and the line TU was also found out to be half. These both are parallel. But whereas the UR and ST are not parallel, they have different slopes. So what we can tell, yes, this is a trapezoid because one pair of sides are parallel to each other. Only one must be parallel. They are called the base. Now these are parallel, right? They are the base. This is the base, which are parallel, and these are the legs. Legs must not be parallel. Now, the legs are not parallel, we found. So, this is a trapezoid. But is it an isosceles trapezoid is the next question. Now, how do you find whether it's isosceles? Just find the dimension of these both, RU and ST, by the distance formula. It is square root of x2 minus x1, the whole square, plus y2 minus y1, the whole square. It's basically just substitution, okay? Find RU and ST. If the lengths are equal, then yes, they are isosceles. But look over here, square root 
37 it's about 6.1 whereas square root 34 is about uh, 5.9 something they're not same so these both are not equal therefore this cannot be isosceles trapezoid it's not an isosceles trapezoid that's it now we have one more problem same method uh, you can just do it it's just lengthy but it's very easy you know at the same time see now this is the formula you have to just find the slope you found the slope over here 0 and 0 then different slope negative 3 fourth and positive 3 fourth so that means yes this is a trapezoid because one set of uh, a pair of uh, lines are parallel but others are not and what about the uh, isosceles we have to find the distance now find the distance using the distance formula and you can see the distance now here remember don't find the distance of the parallel sides there is no point if you do a d and b c they are not equal at all you have to do a b and c d which are non-parallel a b and c d the lines which are non-parallel only those distance we find out okay and they are equal in this case that means it is an isosceles trapezoid so that's how it is and that's the answer and we go to the last uh, set of uh, this is the mid segment one now, mid-segment, it's very easy. Let's look at this figure over here. What it says is, now imagine this is a trapezoid. Is this a trapezoid? These both are parallel and these are not parallel. Yes, it's a trapezoid. Now, there is, the look at this. The two parallel lines are there, right? These are the base. Now, look at the legs. Leg is HL. Okay, this is the leg. Okay, and JK. Now, mid-segment means a line which is drawn at the midpoint of H and L and midpoint of J and K. This point. Midpoint. And that is connected. So, this is a special line because we can write its formula. What, what is TS? That is equal to half of, that's the top base JH, HJ plus the bottom base L and K. So, this is the formula. Now over here, what is given? HJ is given as 14. So that means we know this is 14. What is LK? The base, another base is given as 42. What is TS, the mid segment? Half of this, 40, 50, 56. Half multiplied to it would be 23, 25, 28. That is the value of TS. Sorry, it's going curved uh, because of the way my things are positioned, I'm sorry. Uh, you can see over here, this is the correct answer. I realized that it's going down because I was just cramped up for space. I, I'm sorry for that. I'll write it more accurately and forth. You can see the answer is 28 because of the formula. This is a very important formula. Now try this by yourselves. It's very simple. Okay, I hope you tried. Now we will do it. So this is, okay, if you cannot see, this is LK. Okay, this is the K. Now here, LK is given to be 19 and what is TS? TS is given to be 15. Now how do we find HJ, X? We know TS equals half of LK plus HJ. So TS is known that is 15 equals half of LK is 19 plus X. Now you can put this in the calculator directly and solve or you can simplify, take this to the other side, it will be 15 times 2 is 30 equals 19 plus x. Take 19 to the other side will be 30 minus 19. That is equal to 11. That is x value. It's 11 over here. So that's how we solve it. Very simple, very straightforward. Now please do solve these problems by yourself. They're just similar problems, but different values are unknown. Over here, hj is given and ts is given. You have to find lk, same method. Here, kl. KL is given, where is KL? KL and JH. So again, ST is the same thing. You find it using the mid segment. And TS is given again, LK is given. It's very straightforward mid segment. You know, it's the same thing. You can see this. And now they are telling to find the endpoints. Okay. Now, this is again another easy problem. It's just that you need to uh, find the midpoints. There are various methods for this. One of the method would be, now look at A and B. Are these straight lines? This is the best and easy way. If it is a straight line or a flat line, just count the middle point directly. 
okay count the middle point directly now we have to find the midpoint of a b and d c why because a d and a b c are parallel that means these are the base the legs are these the legs midpoints right we need the legs midpoints how do we find the midpoints is very simple all you need to do is count one two one two three four five that means midpoint will be somewhere at the 2.5 mark that is the midpoint okay i will write m what about this midpoint it will be 1 2 3 4 wait 1 2 see there is one way you can do that is uh, find the pythagoras it's a lengthy one no, uh, i mean it's not very accurate somewhere over here in the middle somewhere over here i'm not sure i don't think so that's the point but somewhere over there okay we will solve that so how do we solve that is midpoint formula midpoint is very easy see what is d d is 1 x is 1 comma y is 1 2 3 4 where c is 1 2 3 0 0 midpoint is always given by x1 plus x2 divided by 2 y1 this comma y1 plus y2 divided by 2 this is a just substitute over there you will get the answer okay you know x1 y1 x2 y2 you can interchange them doesn't matter here they have done midpoint for both but we had found over here the midpoint already right this is minus 3 and 0.5 so one yeah this is already found out directly minus 3 and minus 0.5 or you can use the same midpoint formula and do it the next one is somewhere over here it's 2 and 2 yeah this point is correct what we what we assumed how do we do that is writing the coordinates look this is 1 x is 1 another x is 3 3 plus 1 by 2 that is 2 and what is the y value 4 and 0 4 plus 0 is divided by 2 that's how we do it so these are the midpoints of the mid segment same thing over here please do it by yourselves i'll tell you what is the base this is the base this is the base these are the legs here it is easy to find out because it's a 45 degree line okay now this was not for you this is a 45 degree line the midpoint is here i can easily tell it's over here okay because it covers two blocks from the center so midpoint is very straightforward what about this midpoint it's one it's somewhere over here but you need to use the midpoint formula for accuracy all you have to do is this one over here uh one was minus 1 and 2 yes minus 1 and 2 is correct but this one is 1 2 3 3 and 1/2 and minus 1 yeah it's most accurate but it's better very very uh you know helpful if you use the midpoint formula but since you have four options check which is more likely if other options are elsewhere say they are in the other coordinates altogether then they, you can just ignore those options and choose the correct one that's the end of the topic number 10 okay it was important one that was trapezoids and uh, uh make sure you understand the differentiation of these shapes like i mean difference between the shapes the squares the trapezoids the rhombi or parallelogram or rectangle understand the properties and differences among them it will help you a lot see you in the next video bye bye for now